Hello, and welcome to the Stop Devaluation Podcast. I'm your host and founder of the Stop Devaluation Movement, Melody Hilton. The heart of this movement is to see the value in all of humanity and live courageous lifestyles of using our power for good instead of harm. We can affect change by choosing validation over judgment. And I hope you'll take your place and make a positive impact in this world. Peter Demarest shared, science tells us that if we continue down the path of divisiveness and devaluation of one group or another, ultimately it leads to the complete and utter destruction of us all. The scientific fact reveals when we allow every form of prejudice, hatred, and devaluation to be left unchecked, it becomes self-destructive. This episode is our fourth and final episode with Peter Demarest as we discuss the topic of politics through the science of values generation. I usually totally stay away from political discussions, but I'm talking to an expert in value generation right now. So what would you have to say according to objective science about uh, politics? So the first thing, uh, I want to go back to the the, uh, dimensions of value, systemic, extrinsic, and intrinsic, Mm -hmm. and recognize that, yes, even politicians have infinite intrinsic value as human beings. Yes. Let's start there, right? Yes. So this is not about devaluing any individual person or politician. Uh, as a human being in any way, shape, or form. That is right. Thank you very much. Okay. Secondly, uh, politicians, by definition, live in the systemic world. That is, they have ideas, they have policies that they think are right uh, for whatever reason they think they're right or that they want to you know, put forth. Um, and they are under the influence of a whole bunch of uh, forces, whether they be corporations or associations or their constituents, um, uh, the, the news media, uh, whoever that might be. So there's positive or negative influence around all of that. And that puts those politicians into a particular frame of mind, and to a great degree, they choose which one they want to be in to get elected or for whatever um, conceptual reasons that they uh, they have for wanting to be in office or run for office. And I, I'm not, I don't want to in any way suggest that their reasons are evil. Correct. I think there are a lot of politicians who in their heart of hearts are, in fact, all politicians, I believe, are, are um, fundamentally became politicians for good reasons. Mm-hmm. Might they have lost their way? Yeah, some. Might they have made some mistakes in judgment? Yes. In fact, a mistake is really just a misjudgment of the value of things. Mm-hmm. Ben Franklin said, you know, some 200 and whatever years ago, um, I can see that the great miseries of mm-hmm. mankind are brought upon them by the false estimates they have made of the value of things. Yeah. Right? So... So we have uh, in the political arena, we have people across the political spectrum, every one of them, let's assume, with good intentions to make a difference, a positive difference in society, Mm -hmm. but very, very different opinions, systemic concepts about what that requires, Mm -hmm. what the policy should be and what programs need to be in place, et cetera. However, the laws of value science also show us that when a politician, um, and and keeping in mind that politicians are leaders, right? So they are highly influential about what we as citizens believe and think, uh, just as much as the, the news media may be. So when a politician or the news media or anyone of influence starts to speak in ways that are devaluing of one group, 
um, particularly if they are intrinsically devaluing them, like devaluing them as human beings, right? Like na- like name calling, right? Yes. Um, or or telling, trying to promote the idea that these are evil human beings. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is the kind of destruction of um, of value that can will ultimately lead to the destruction of our quality of life, of our society. Um, and and of in many cases life itself, and we only have to go back, you know, uh, less than a hundred years, what seventy years, to see a situation where that very thing occurred in Germany. Mm-hmm. And we can go back further in history where it's occurred throughout human history, right? Right. And uh, an entire city, the societies disappeared as a as a result of that. Now. Uh, in today in the presidential election arena, uh, it is occurring on both sides of the aisle, mm-hmm. right? And so it's not for me to say who's right, who's wrong. My goal as uh, in axiogenics and in teaching value science and self-leadership is for people to just to understand the laws of value dynamics. There you just go. as it's important to understand the laws of aerodynamics if you want to build an airplane, well, you better understand the laws of value creation if you want to maximize the quality of your life and the quality of your organization, the quality of our society. That is so and good. And if you can learn what those are, you'll come to your own realizations about who you should vote for. That's very good. You'll come to your own realizations about who to back, how to live your own life. And um, and who to uh, you know support in your own campaigning if you do in any active way. Uh, well, that's you know. one thing that really mm-hmm. excites me about not just the science of axiogenics, but the application of this understanding, because each one of us can be a voice. Each one of us can be value centric. Each one of us can choose uh, to value somebody that I disagree with and celebrate their intrinsic worth as a human being, no matter what side of the aisle they're on, no matter what side uh, of a religious divide they're on, whatever it is that we have this beautiful ability to begin to be light in darkness, uh, to yeah. be a voice to bring positive change. And so I believe that it's not just the politicians, it's every person in our nation or nations uh, and how they respond to this because the grassroots have a whole lot of power. And mm-hmm. if we individually rise up and say, I'm going, I'm going to choose to see value in, in every human being. And there was someone that said something very uh, devaluing about a specific uh, political leader. And I said, I disagree with their views, but if I ever met them, I'd want to give them a hug, kiss them on the cheek, and let them know I love them and really mean it. And honestly, mm-hmm. with all of my heart, That is how I feel because every human being carries worth. And if we would just have that mindset instead of attacking someone's intrinsic worth, we can disagree with their methods or even disagree with their actions, but still value the person. And I think that can bring such healing to our land. And that's why I wanted to talk about this. And and I'm glad we took the risk of going there because every person in the sound of my voice, can make a decision in their own heart today what type of person they want to be and how they're going to respond to different races, different gender, different ages, different socioeconomic statuses, uh, you know, different political views. We have this amazing opportunity uh, to release a grassroots movement of validation in our world. So let me ask you another question. Oh, yeah. go ahead. Do you if want to I can, say, yes, please do. Sure, because you said something that was really important about uh, being able to take that person who you who you completely disagree with, or in great degree disagree with their policies or their actions, but still love them intrinsically as a human being. Without that love, that compassion for the intrinsic value, there yes. can be no healing. 
Yes. You experienced that in your own life. If you didn't have people who loved you unconditionally in your life, you never would have had the transformation that you did. That's right. Now you make me want to cry again, Peter. <laughs> and and really, so, this is not a difficult thing. I mean, we no. will have to make some choices, but it's a whole lot easier to love than it is to hate. It's a whole lot easier to value than it is to devalue if we understand the ramifications of both. There is also another element that in the political season here that, that I do think is really, really important. And that is that um, if you see devaluation happening, if you see divisiveness happening, if you see the things that destroy um, value creation for all people, yes, um, and violations of the hierarchy of value, if you will, mm -hmm. we must speak up. Yes, there you go. We must <laughs> be active in our holding people accountable. Yes, um, with love, right? Mm -hmm. Tough mm -hmm. love, right? To say, "I love you, Andrew Wrong." Or I love you and this way of thinking is not going to lead us to greater value. Yes. Um, and if that means voting somebody out of office or um, you know, changing who you vote for, if you can rise above your own self-interest and who you think is going to, in the short run, give you what you want, but it's going to cost the rest of society uh, and the world, because we do live in a global society now, um, particularly, uh, you know, if that means making a tough choice for the for um, for the good of our children and for the good of our uh, the, the human race and our society, then make it mm -hmm. have the courage to um, to stand for good rather than allow evil and devaluation to stand um, where it is, you know? So, uh, Peter, in personal and professional relationships, uh, mm -hmm. does seeing or upholding the intrinsic value of a person mean you shouldn't fire somebody who underperforms in their work or set boundaries in toxic relationships or even end a marriage with an abusive spouse? Right. So, um, it, it gets right back to that, recognizing the intrinsic value of the human being. However, if someone uh, doesn't have the attributes required extrinsically to fulfill the role of a particular job, uh, then an organization, in the case of an employee who's underperforming, actually has a fiduciary responsibility to either find a way to enable that employee to um, to develop the attributes needed to perform and to and to um, to do their part towards the organization's success or find them a new home mm -hmm. or that is encourage them to find a a place to work uh, where they 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 can and this gets back to one of the most fundamental axioms of axiology and it's what we call the definition of good mm. and it's this Something is good to the degree that it has all the attributes required to fulfill its purpose. So, purpose can exist on many levels, right? You can have the, the uh, for example, the purpose of an employee is defined by whatever role that employee is going to play. If they're a salesperson, then their uh, role is to sell, to generate revenues for the organization. And from and the organization, in order to survive, has to have revenues, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It has to um, be able to fulfill its purpose sufficient to stay in existence. And it's not just about the owners of the organization. It's about all those employees, too. Yeah. If the company goes out of business, those employees lose their livelihood as well. Yeah. So the leaders of an organization have a fiduciary responsibility to ensure the survivability of the organization. And a way to maximize that survivability is also to maximize performance, but also to maximize the quality of the culture so that, you know, people want to work there. They want to want to give their best. But occasionally, 
you'll have people who just don't have those attributes required to fulfill the purpose of the role that they're in, whether it be sales or accounts receivable or computer programming or even leadership itself. So, yes, if somebody is underperforming and you've made a reasonable effort to train them or to um, coach them such that they can um, move from being a cost center to to, uh, uh, to to a value generative uh, employee, then you let them go. But how you let them go mm. is really, really important. That's so good. Right? Um, we've all seen, you know, movies or television shows or even experienced in our own life what it's like when somebody is completely and utterly devalued in the process of being fired. And it's usually out of anger and a snap decision. Uh, and it can be devastating to the person who's being fired. Yeah. Uh, it is a form, I believe, of abuse. Mm. And um, not as egregious, perhaps, as, uh, you know, uh, spousal abuse or sexual abuse, or but it is emotional abuse mm -hmm. um, to devalue someone so much. Um, how will they ever recover and feel the confidence to go find another job? where their talents may be better applied uh, and, and enable them to contribute to society. They feel worthless. And what are the chances that they may be, if they are worthless, that they feel like they, you know, they have to, uh, that they, they can't succeed. Mm -hmm. And the impact that that can have on their families and, and on society as it multiplies out is, uh, can be devastating and really heavy. And the same thing, so not to get into any kind of religious belief, there certainly are religions who don't believe in things like divorce, but from a purely axiological standpoint, marriage itself, like the, um, the legal definition of marriage is a systemic concept, and it is never to be valued as high as the individual human being. Mm -hmm. So if a relationship, a marriage, is one in which one spouse is abusing and disvaluing the other, it is a violation of the laws of value creation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the systemic um, concept of marriage pales in comparison to the infinite value of that, that human being. Now, does that mean you don't work to heal it? Well, of course. The abuser uh, has intrinsic value as a human being but not extrinsic or systemic value as a partner. Mm. Um, one thing I, I talk a lot about is that love comes from my character, but trust comes from their character. And so if someone's actions are devaluing, then in my opinion, it is not just uh, wisdom, but it is actually validation to set up healthy boundaries that keep the bad out and protect my heart. What do you think about that? So in the science of axiology, there are two what we call domains of value. There is the world outside of us, and that includes other people. Mm -hmm. And then there is the self, the self view, the, the inner self, how we view ourselves, our lives, our goals, our, um, our worth as a human being. And axiologically, they are of equal value. In other words, your value as a human being intrinsically is equal and uh, as an infinite thing mm -hmm. as the value of any other human being. Yes. Right. So if you are in a relationship with someone who um, is treating you as if you are less value, then they are violating the hierarchy of value, and it will lead to ultimate destruction of both of you mm -hmm. if it is allowed to continue. So the boundaries, as you've uh, spoken them, are to say, you will, I'm not going to let you devalue me. Mm -hmm. That's your issue. 
It's not mine. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to allow it to be mine. Because if I let you continue to devalue me, I'm at risk of devaluing myself. Mm-hmm. And once that starts to happen, we're, we're, you know, that's the, that's the, the abused spouse who allows herself to stay or himself to stay in that relationship because they really start to believe they are unworthy of being in any other relationship. Right. Peter, is there anything else that you desire to address? I mean, the Stop Devaluation movement is a global audience. And um, if there's anything you want to say to the world, what would that be? Foremost, um, I would invite uh, people throughout the world and in whatever language to, to really to start to recognize that, that the quality of your life mm-hmm. is dependent on the quality of your thinking. And quality of life is about the value you create, not the value you get. There's that old adage of what goes around comes around, right? Mm-hmm. But it starts with the going part. Uh, and it starts with the creation. Abundance is a creative thing. And, uh, and if we want to experience abundance, we need to do our part, uh, in, uh, in fulfilling that. I mean, the fundamental purpose of life itself is to continue life itself and to maximize the quality of that life. Yes. And the only way to do that is to create value, to create goodness, the fulfillment of um, a valuogenic purpose. So if we can, if people can just start to recognize and even just practice it, test it yourself. There, yeah. If you, if you start to think about and ask yourself the central question with regularity and in earnest, whenever you are stressed out, upset, uh, feeling angry or confused or overwhelmed or even procrastinating, defensive, any such negative kind of emotion. Just ask yourself, what choice can I make and action can I take in this moment to create the greatest net value? Recognizing that net value means not only for anyone else, but for you as well. Yes. Both short and long term and with, with everything concerned. You know, it's a big question. We'd have to be all knowing to be able to answer it all the time accurately. Mm. But as human beings, we have an innate higher intelligence that when we start to ask ourselves the right questions, we have far more wisdom than we might imagine. No matter how horrible you think your life has been, you still have goodness there. You still have an ability to answer that question perhaps better than you have in the past, but you have to start by asking it. Wow. And so start there. Uh, and the more you can learn about the science of axiology, you know, we all go to school and learn about uh, the laws of physics and mathematics and a little chemistry and, you know, other sciences. But um, it's not taught. Axiology, uh, value science is not taught in schools. And so uh, seek out ways, whether it's through my book or other sources out on the Internet, to learn a little bit more about what it means to create value. Even Aristotle said that all things aim, all actions, all endeavors, all inventions, they all aim towards some greater good. And whatever that ultimate good is, whatever that ultimate purpose is, must be an amazing thing. Mm. And that the more we can learn about what good means and what it means to be valuogenic, Aristotle didn't say this part, mm-hmm. um, but it's the extension of it. So the more that we can know about good and value, the more we are empowered to create it and to live it and to experience it and to make good decisions and to hold a higher standard for ourselves and and uh, and people in our lives. Whether we're leaders or followers, doesn't matter. We're all, we all have our part to play in that. Yes. And if we can sort of create that movement, um, you know, we're, 
we're such great partners, Melody, because um, in in life, in the world, I mean, um, because you're speaking the voice of stop devaluation and the hand in hand that goes with value creation, right? The two things are inseparable. And um, so not just you and I together, but, but really, it's the message that, that uh, the more people in the world that can hear it and start to live um, in that way, we will survive. Yeah. We will thrive. We will be able to create societies that are as yet unimagined. Yes. In uh, the unleashment of uh, of human spirit, because we're no longer wasting the human mind. So good. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you for being a value generator. Thank you for caring enough about individuals and society to be a voice, to be that courageous voice that really builds bridges across all the divides and you do it through validation. Thank you so much. I have been so honored for you to give so much of your time, your effort and your knowledge and your heart on the Stop Devaluation podcast. No, Melody, you are you are such a, a force for good in the world, and it's my my honor, believe me, all mine, uh, that uh, that you would invite me into this conversation. Well, thank so. you, thank you so much. This truly is a season in history when we must be courageous voices of validation, confronting prejudice, crossing the great divides, and valuing all of humanity. As Peter shared, the quality of your life is dependent upon the quality of your thinking, and the quality of life is the value you create, not the value you get. Practice being a value generator in your world. Be a light. Be a catalyst of hope. I want to thank you for listening and encourage you to become a part of the Stop Devaluation Movement. Be sure to like and follow hashtag Stop Devaluation on social media, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and visit StopDevaluation.com for more information and free resources. You can help spread the movement by sharing with others, leaving a review on Apple Podcasts, and most of all, by living a courageous lifestyle of using your power for good. Go out and value someone today. Your life matters and you can make the world a better place. One word, one choice, one action of validation at a time.
I want to thank you for listening and encourage you to become a part of the Stopped Evaluation Movement. Be sure to like and follow hashtag Stopped Evaluation on social media, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and visit StoppedEvaluation.com for more information and free resources. You can help spread the movement by sharing with others, leaving a review on Apple Podcasts, and most of all, by living a courageous lifestyle of using your power for good. Go out and value someone today. Your life matters and you can make the world a better place. One word, one choice, one action of validation at a time.